Hey folks, it's Shane from Foreman TV. Today we're going to dig into this Tesla onboard charger. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put electric car components into fun and interesting non-electric cars. So I try and do a combination of actually working on the cars and looking at some of the components that I'm going to be using on this. So if that's the sort of stuff that you uh, are into, then please consider subscribing or, you know, drop me a like, drop me a comment, always appreciated. Um, the last couple of videos I've been working on our electric Porsche project, so you can check out um, some of those videos up here. Today we're going to look at the charger that actually goes in that car, or that is going to go in that car. So, yeah, let's take a look. So what we've got here is a third generation or Gen 3 uh, Tesla charger. Uh, this is the onboard charger, so this is what uh, sits inside the car, behind the back or under the back seats, I think, in the Tesla, and basically takes AC power and converts it into DC before then supplying it to the battery. Um, so this is if you're plugging it in at home into you know a, a plug-in charger, or if you're using uh, like a you know a Type 2. Uh, charge port, just um, anything other than like the superchargers or um, any other DC charging. This is what's on, in the car to, to take that from AC and convert it into, into DC. So this wouldn't be your fast charge. But given that um, this is the Gen 3 model, it's actually pretty decent. So uh, with a, a power supply, uh, that's got enough uh, going for it, it can actually put, put out about 22 kilowatts, um, which is pretty decent. Uh, it's three phases, so this is the European setup, and I'll, I'll show you inside it once, once I get on it. It differs slightly from the US. Um, but if it's using a, you know, a, an AC charger, an external charger that can actually manage uh, three phases, then it'll actually pull out the full 22 kilowatts. Um, if you're, you know, just a home charger or something that doesn't have all that backing it up, it's just single phase, then it will um, still be able to manage about seven kilowatts. So yeah, let's get this down, let's get this open. All right, so we took uh, a little look around it with some nice music earlier, um, but let's actually look at the outside of it and I'll show you where all the different uh, connections in that are. So if we start down here at the base of the T, we've got the connections to the logic boards. That's where the signals come in from uh, other parts of the car. So the battery and that sort of thing to then allow it to figure out what it's going to do. And we've got our coolant and then a couple of mounting uh, bolts. If we go around the right hand side is looking from the top. This is where you've got your DC output. So this is going from the DC bus to the battery after it's been converted from AC or if it's been passed through from a fast charger and that will connect directly to the battery. Nothing on this side. And then at the top we've got our inputs. So we've got three phases in neutral coming in and then we've got our other coolant hose. <laughs> so that's the outside of the charger. I think that's enough of that. Let's go look inside. All right, we've got you on the tripod so I can uh, got two hands to do this. Uh, so you'll be staring at this for a little while. But basically, you've got two sets of Torx screws uh, that need to be undone. One set is for this cover plate. And basically, this is this allows access to the different connections for 
the um, power, so AC and DC, uh, without having to take the full lid off and exposing the, the circuit boards and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this has already been opened by the company I bought it from, I guess, to actually get it out of the car. Unfortunately, the warranty is void. I don't know what I'll do. Um, but we're going to get this taken off, uh, look very quickly at those, and then we'll take the rest of the, the cover off. All right, that was easy. Um, yeah, nice plastic covers just to prevent any chance of the you know, power cables touching the case, which is very important when dealing with these currents. Um, so yeah, let's bring you in closer. So this is our AC input. And um, we've got our three phases. We've got contacts in there, which I'll, of course, need to send something to. And then we've got our DC side. So just two in there. Looks like there's a missing screw, uh, so I'll have to source that from somewhere. I'm sure it doesn't need to be uh, exactly the same. All right, let's get the rest of this opened up. All right, that's all the screws undone. Let's crack this open. All right, so nearly got uh, unstuck with a uh, screw that was hiding behind this uh, warranty seal, but managed this little uh, gap here where you can start to pry the, the edges. It's the only kind of free point along the outside and that has freed it up. So let's get this off. So it looks like there's an actual kind of rubber gasket around here um, rather than kind of squidged sealant, which is good. And then uh, plastic to just protect things from hitting the aluminum of the case. All right, so here we've got our charger laid out in front of us. Um, first time I've actually seen inside this charger myself. Uh, I've done all sorts of research and investigation online, you know, looking at in depth at pictures and reading descriptions, uh, other people's videos. This is the first time I've seen it myself. Um, very cool looking, but yeah, let's go take a look. So as we said, the charger runs in this direction. Uh, along the three phases. So then going through our charger in order, we've got power coming in to these terminals here uh, along bus bars and that eventually connects to these two um, points. We've got live, we've got neutral, got a couple of fuses and it's a combination of, I guess, logic circuitry, it seems on top and then a lot of the heavy lifting is being done on the under, underside. Some of the components are connected to the, the base and then soldered in. Others are just kind of hanging from the underside of this um, circuit board. But from kind of front to, to back, we've got some inductors at various points along here. And then as we get down towards the end, we've got a transformer. another inductor and then our connections out to the DC bus. So AC bus at this end, power coming in, DC bus at this end, power going out. That's where the connections to the wires are that then come up and connect to these bus bars here, which go out to the, um, the battery itself. And then there's other connections underneath 
for DC charging, but I'll get into that in a future video when I get in underneath all of this. So there we have it. That is the inside, the inner workings of this Tesla Gen 3 charger. Um, it's a really cool setup. Uh, I think very compact for what it does. And I think it'll be a good fit in our, our project car. But I, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed uh, th this first look. We'll go deeper uh, in a future video. I want to see what's underneath all of this. I want to see the, the bus bar routings and everything so I can, yeah, fully understand it. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this this first look at the at the inner workings. And if you know if you've enjoyed this and this is the sort of thing you you like watching, you want to see more of it, please consider subscribing. Uh, you know, g give me a, give me a thumbs up on uh, on YouTube. That's always appreciated. But yeah, um, thanks for joining us on this, and we'll see you soon.